What it is, what it do, Cyber World. It is your girl, the one, the only, Ash Said It. Ash Said It.com. Ash Said It.com. Welcome to the Ash Said It daily podcast show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,700 episodes and half a million streams worldwide. None of this would be possible without you guys. So I thank you so very, very much. And yes, we're into the you know, we're we're heading, we're on the heels of a, of a nice summer. It's going to be a nice warm summer here in the A-Town. And so what else is there to do but to go out places, you know? But also we need to be checking out some really awesome, some good movie projects that are upcoming. So I have got with me the very multi-talented Zach Gerard. Hey, Zach. <laughs> Good, I ask how are you? Lovely to speak to you. Thanks oh. for uh, thanks for taking your time. And, and it is summer. It's 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 time to get out and see some flicks. And that's right. Yeah, get back out there. And <laughs> It's yeah. just an entertainment. <laughs> Certainly. So, yeah, so we're, we're going to get into that, Zach, because you, you got some stuff cooking on the stove that we want to talk about. So definitely interested in yes, that. It's, <laughs> so, it's very busy in the kitchen, mate. Very busy. Yes, yes. Very busy cooking up some stuff. So, Zach, to start things off, where are you from? We hear an accent, of course. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it right, Ash. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm what's called a, a, I'm what's called actually a Novocastrian. So mm. I'm from a, a town called Newcastle, Australia, and we have our own moniker uh, called Novocastrians. So um, I, I'm, I was born and bred there, and then I moved to the United States uh, about seven years ago. Okay, all right. Definitely been hanging out with us for a minute. So, what was the motivation for you to become an actor? Look, it's a really good question. There wasn't really one specific thing, I think. Ash, I, I was just presented with a moment where I was sort of, I had time to engage in it. I, I was always interested in film and TV. I always loved it. And, you know, I grew up on a lot of the movies that a lot of people here love, you know, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, all the big blockbusters of the 90s and things like that. And my mates and my brother and I would often just, you know, recreate scenes and do little stop motion things with <laughs> mum's camera and things like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, <laughs> very creative. And then um, when I was about 14, I broke my foot. I played a lot of professional sport when I was younger. Mm. And during that time while I was, you know, waiting for my foot to heal, I just started doing public speaking and a bit more sort of drama work. And I started training with a teacher. And I really liked it. I really liked the idea of, of reading things, learning about people and, of course, cultures and communities yeah. and history. And you get a lot of that exposure, of course, through this medium. Mm-hmm. And that's what really drew me in. And then when I was 16, I... I signed with an agency in Sydney, and uh, I got my first lead role on a TV show when I was 17, and the rest is history. Okay, cool beans. So, for you, what, yeah. was, what was the biggest challenge as you were embarking on this brand new industry? That's a great question, Ash. Look, I can only speak for myself as an Australian. Right. I mean, and as, a, as, a, as a Caucasian Australian actor, as a white mm-hmm. Australian actor, you know, there was a lot of opportunities for me because, um, you know, I, I had that privilege of, of being, of working at a time where there was a lot of opportunities. But still, in Australia, you still have, it, it's still a long way away from America. Yeah. And it's a competitive industry and it is, of course, a, it can be a tough industry. Mm. So for me, it was more about just uh, just reconnecting with yourself and, and building that resolve mm. of, you know, constantly challenging yourself, not taking rejection personally and also trying to get better each time. Um, I know it seems like a lot of cliches, but that's sort of the truth of it is you've got to, you've got to, you've got to be able to take on criticism. You've also got to understand that a lot of decisions in this industry aren't personal. Okay. And you've always got to reconnect as to why you want to do this, what drives you, what makes you want to do it. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into one of my favorite pastimes. I've grown up. I I was actually named off of a soap opera. Um, Zach, like it was, it's really pretty funny. Like literally, my mom was like, Which one? Um, "Um, Young and the Restless, Ashley Abbott." <laughs> so my name came oh, from Ashley. Like cool. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, you know, she's like, we. She never knew an Ashley. She never. We, we didn't have any Ashleys in the family, and so it was between Ashley and Courtney. So I'm very closely tied when it comes to soap operas. And one of the ones that's, that's very still, cool. still hanging out is um, is General Hospital. And so when I found out about you and. You know, I, you know, got the information from your press person and everything like that. And they were like, you know, do you want to have, I was like, um, yeah, 
You're talking about uh, Levi Dunkelman. Uh, yeah, we're going to have him on the show. Let's come through with it. So <laughs> I want to talk to you about how, what was the process like for you in building the background for that character? That, that's a wonderful question. And I love talking about General <laughs> Hospital because it is, of course, one of the big four that's remained. Yes. You know? um, now, I've got to say, I, I, my mum watched Days of Our Lives when I was yeah. young in Australia. So I knew all of American soap operas. Mm. But General Hospital was just one. It's, it, I, I knew of it. I didn't know much about it. Gotcha. So when I auditioned, they kind of give you like a vague outline of who the character is and what's going on. It's all very top secret and, you know, it's all fake scripts mm-hmm. and fake names and things yeah. like that. But... I, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but it was week to week. So you get your scripts about 10 days before you shoot your scene. Right. Um, so sometimes you, you don't, like, <laughs> even as an actor, you're left on a cliffhanger. So you'll read a script for one week and you'll go, oh my God, what's going to happen next? So, <laughs> wait. so we're waiting for the installments as well, mm-hmm. um, which is always really exciting. So for me, I, I learned as I went along what Levi's story would be, and I remember um, Kirsten, who plays Maxie, and she said to me that if they tie you into the to the story somehow, that's when you know you've made it, and I think mm. you know well that ultimately Levi turned out to be Peter, Peter Harrell's son, and I was there to steal some jewels <laughs> and get some vengeance and all kinds of stuff, and I, I didn't find that out till the very end of, of my arc on General Hospital. Mm. So... <laughs> It was really, it was really quite thrilling, I guess, to to learn and experience as I went along. Mm. What would you say was the biggest? Hmm. What did, what was your takeaway from General Hospital from that experience? Oh, there was lots, Ash. Mm-hmm. There was lots. One one predominantly is just the work ethic of the place. How hard people work. Like it's literally a twenty four hour operation. Yeah. So you go in at six a.m. You'll shoot for twelve hours on all the sets they have set up for that day and then the night crew will come in and strike those sets and build the sets for the next day. So it's a 24-hour operation at the studio over at Prospect over here in, um, in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So it's quite a... Um, it's, that's something to behold. Also, just how incredible the actors are. The yeah. actors are absolutely amazing. They're very talented people. I've talked about this before, like watching Jason Thompson and Dom Zapronia mm-hmm. perform while I was there was, was remarkable. Because they move at such a fast pace, so you've yeah. got to be switched on. You've got to be there in the moment, ready to work every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was probably the work ethic, the pace at which they move, and also just the joy of it, the fun, the escapism. Because what I learned is like there's the serious stories, there's the really earnest stories, you know, that are quite dramatic, mm-hmm. and then there's some some more fun ones. And I was. I was part of the fun one with Ryan. Ryan and I had a lot of fun. Uh, we played Nathan. We had a lot of fun yeah. with our uh, with our characters. So yeah, I'd say they were the takeaways mostly. Okay, cool. Now the next project that is upcoming and it's the sequel project, I believe, Rainfall. You're not only starring in this project, but you're also the associate producer. What was that like for you? You know, you're typically used to just taking on your acting role. You're, you know, you got your script, you're getting into character, things of that nature. But now you've got another responsibility. What was that like? That's <laughs> it. Was it was a a revelation? Mm. It was uh, it was difficult. It was it was a consuming job, but yeah. I think it was a it's a really quite rewarding experience. Ultimately, right. um, I mean, just from the acting side, from the acting point of view, mm-hmm. I was reprising a character from a film called Occupation, which is available on on demand. Um, that was released in two thousand and seventeen. So mm-hmm. I, I was fairly in touch with the character, and, and the same the director, Luke Spark. Uh, was already very clear with where he wanted to go with the narrative. So the acting wasn't... That was fine. I, I was ready for that. And we had we have an amazing cast in this movie. We've got Ken Jeong and Tamara Morrison and Jason Isaacs and mm-hmm. Daniel Gillies and Dean, Dina Kaplan and Dan Ewing and all these amazing <laughs> actors, uh, Jet Tranter. And so so that was, that was fine. The producing side of it makes it pretty much a... Uh, just like General Hospital, it was almost a 24-hour job because you go and you shoot your scenes and they're big, like the $25 million movie. So it's big. Everything about it is big. So you go and shoot these huge set pieces during the day and you're sweaty and knocked up and it's very physical. It's a lot of fun, you know, because there's nothing more enjoyable than going to work and getting dirty. (laughs) Um, And then you, then you wrap and 
and then you go sit in the office for a few hours and talk about uh, what's going to happen the next day, and you're always solving problems. It's like solving a Rubik's Cube that's fighting back. <laughs> because cause you, you're trying to get everything lined up, and, you know, films... Films are a malleable beast. They're always changing yeah. because of various things. So you've just got to prepare for everything that may go wrong, <laughs> which sounds really <laughs> cynical. But if you're prepared yeah. for what may go wrong, then nothing can really surprise you. And that, just, that was essentially my job, was to listen to the director, listen to the producers and help them if I could. I love it. Now, when is this project going to be available? Is it going to be available on streaming services? Yeah, it, it comes into cinemas. If anybody, if anybody wants to, the movie cinemas are of course open yeah. uh, across the country at various capacities. You can see it at the cinemas starting next Friday, June eleventh, okay. um, and it's going to be available. Yeah, so it's available on demand as well on all platforms: um, iMovies, Amazon Prime, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. If you yes. don't, if you can't get the movies to see it. Um, we're actually having our first preview screening tomorrow night here in Los Angeles at a really cool place at the, at the drive-in in Hollywood. So the, there's, a, there's a cinema chain here called Cine Lounge, which uh, during the pandemic opened a drive-in cinema right in the middle of Hollywood. Oh, wow. So we're going to have our, um, yeah, we're having our screening tomorrow just one block down from, the, from Grauman's Chinese Theatre on Hollywood Boulevard. Cool beans. Last but certainly not least, Zach, What advice would you offer to any new aspiring actors? Oh, guys, go just go for it. Mm. You know, back yourself, work hard, get into a good school, find good teachers, Mm -hmm. laugh, definitely (laughs) laugh. And I guess to to quote one of my favorite actors, Joel Edgerton, an Aussie actor who I deeply respect, don't let any rejection make you feel less about yourself because that's this industry is mostly. No, Mm -hmm. don't let the word no be obstructionist. Let it be constructive Mm -hmm. because sometimes it's about just finding the right way in. Um, And, you know, be humble Mm -hmm. and be appreciative because um, (laughs) there's no shortage of actors ever. (laughs) (laughs) So, but but if if you work hard and you believe in yourself and you enjoy what you do, you're going to be just fine. I love it. Zach Gerard, thank you so much for joining us today. I am beyond the moon no. excited. <laughs> yeah, my, my pleasure, Ash. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem. I know that there's going to be more movies and projects and stuff going on in the next couple of months. So, Zach, you're going to have to come back. I want to talk about that. Oh, stuff. I'd love to, Ash. Yeah, there's a, few, there's a few things coming, so it's pretty yeah, exciting. Thank yeah. you. Definitely. Zach, also, let everyone know if they want to get in contact with you or follow you on social media, where do they need to go? Yeah, of course. Well, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, just type in my name, Zach Garrett, Z-A-C, <laughs> Z in America, Z-A-C-G-A-R-R-E-D. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, they're probably the two best mediums to follow me on. All right, perfection. Much more success to you and all, all of the team, Zach. I know that you're going to do some pretty awesome stuff. Looking forward to it. <laughs> And, uh, Thank you, Ash. That's lovely you to say. Not a problem. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for your love and support. Keeping in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do. You look them square in the face. You tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for, the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys. <laughs>